this. All right. Hi, Will. It's a miracle. We are it talking. I, I thought oh. I was gonna, Desiree, I thought I was gonna have you on, um, on, my, on my computer, but you're now on my phone. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm just gonna stick you on my little clock there. All right. Maybe I'll have to lift you a bit higher. The I'm, picture is very clear. Um, I'm the gonna use a bit of a Brompton bike to lift up the um, camera a bit more. All right. As, as we're doing, we have to be a bit in front to you. Um, yeah, I think that sort of works. Excellent. Well, excellent. Well, oh. you are like a magnet. Say again? You are like a magnet. You attract so many people joining here. Oh, my dear. I don't know about that. I, I, what, what I'm trying to do is make some bicycles. And, um... <laughs> well, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, for, it's an honor for me to have you in my IG live. It's the other way around. We, the honor is all mine. Thank you very much. We do have like now 200 something uh, joining us. Uh, mostly from Indonesian community in England, also yes. in, in Jakarta. The topic of our discussion is Brampton from West London to Indonesia. Yes. And it's an honor to have you, Will. Um, Mr. Will Butler Adams, uh, CEO of Brampton. Unfortunately, his name is less famous, less famous than the Brampton brand itself. I'm not worried about me. I'm much <laughs> more interested in the bicycle. Thank you. Uh, we are going to have... Uh, uh, conversation about healthy lifestyle, Brompton philosophy, people-to-people uh, -people contact, Brompton's uh, general plan in Indonesia, and yes. also I would later on at the end of our conversation to request uh, to you to convey the message to Indonesian bike cycle enthusiasts, especially yes. Brompton. Yes. Let yes. me throw one question. The first question, Bill. What is the philosophy and the story behind Brompton Folding Bike? Okay. Well, since I'm on my phone and not on my computer, um, I'm just going to take you on a journey um, in the factory, since we are in the factory. And um, occasionally people forget that this bike um, is made in uh, the factory. So... Um, I'm just going to show the viewers uh, the factory. Wow, huge. Whoops, there we go. And, um, and there's a little thing over here, which is uh, a little clue to what you, we, we might be talking about. Burn calories, yes. Burn calories, not fossil fuel. Yes. Yes. Um, and really, our bike was, was, was conceived in 1975 by Andrew. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he conceived something like many inventors, not because he was thinking of changing the world, but because he wanted one and it didn't exist. And he lived in a city. Um, he still, funny enough, rents the same flat just up from Harrods, not far from the V&A Museum. And um, he, he wanted a bike that was more flexible, mm. that fitted with urban living, that mm. wasn't um, flex, that, 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 that was good quality, useful. So he designed this bike. And what we've discovered, I suppose, over the years is the extent to which this little bicycle that he designed, in many respects for himself, has um, changed how people live. It, it affects your life. It, it isn't just many products that we buy, we're persuaded to buy by marketing and pressure and we buy things and did we really need it and how long did we, did, did, how much did we use it? But we found with the Brompton, it's, it, it, you buy it, but it ends up becoming part of your life and it makes you feel happier in yourself. It gives you a sense of freedom. It, it amazingly introduces you to new friends and allows you to build a community of friendship and not just um, in, 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 in your own city, but when you travel, it's amazing how you meet other friends on their Brompton. So I think 
the bike was conceived for Andrew for himself. But as the business has grown, we realized he created something that has much more potential to impact society than even he realized. Excellent. Very impressive. He is a genius, uh, Andrew, I think, and also very visionary. I remember very well, um, though I don't have Brompton yet, until later on you convince me to get one, I will buy one. But I want to, make, uh, to have an assurance from you. Neatly, yes, very neat. Uh, convenient, yes. But what else in terms of uh, being friendly to the earth? Zero emission. So I think, um, and I'm repeating myself slightly, but Andrew was thinking about his life in London, which is a large city. But of course, London is different to San Francisco, it's different to Jakarta, it's different to Shanghai, Tokyo, Paris, um, many other cities. But what we have learned over the years is that even though our cities are different, there are more similarities to urban living than there are differences. And we have seen around the world, it doesn't matter whether it's in Russia or China or the great America or Europe, which are all different cultures with different histories and different ways of managing their economies and their people. We have seen in the last 50 years net migration to cities. Doesn't matter whether it's in communism or whether it's in, 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 in sort of democracy. There's been all over the world this consistent movement into cities. And none of us voted for it. No, no politician said, who, who wants to live in cities? It just sort of happened. Yeah. But in many cases, without us realising it, it hasn't actually necessarily made us happier. We live in smaller places. We have to work harder because it's so expensive. The quality of life for us and our children isn't necessarily so good because as soon as you leave your building, ironically, the place where most of us live in the world, the air quality is the worst. And we think, well, how did we come up with that for an idea? Surely where most humans live should be the most beautiful place, the most inspiring, relaxing, positive place to live. But we, that hasn't what's happened. So I think if we want to um, live in harmony with our little blue planet that we all live on, we need to think about how we want to live in our cities. And for the last 50 years, that has started and finished with the internal combustion engine, principally. Be that cars, buses, trucks. But actually, if we reflect on it, is that sensible? Does that make sense to have something that produces fumes and takes up a lot of space? It's not a very efficient way to move a human being. A car weighs, I don't know, a thousand, one thousand five hundred kilos, two thousand kilos for one human being. A bicycle weighs fifteen kilos. It carries the same human being. It's much more efficient. Not just efficient in how it moves you. In other words, you're burning calories. You're not burning fossil fuels. But also in its manufacture, the amount of energy needed just to make a car. And then the car ends up after ten years going into landfill. So I think it's not about, you know, wandering around wearing Hessian underpants or, you know, living a really extreme life where all you eat is, is, is sort of very, 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 you live a very frugal life. It is actually about having a more rich life, a more happy life, a more enjoyable life, so by being more clever and thinking about how we want to live in our cities and design it for our children and their children and how we want to use less resources and use the resources more cleverly and more efficiently, the bicycle has a really important role to play in how we think about cities and not just the Brompton. You know, we don't need to move things across cities. There are cargo bikes, there are bikes for taking children to school. And also, if it's 
safe to cycle, it's safe to walk. If the air's clean for cycling, it's clean for walking. And it's clean for people who are sitting in the park. It, it, it has a net benefit. So I think it isn't just about carbon. It's about mental health, physical health, and just, you know, we, happiness, really, more than anything else. Is it enough to say it's about lifestyle, as simple as that? It is lifestyle, but it's lifestyle that is modest. It's lifestyle that is thinking about not just yourself. People have lifestyles where they're very um, selfish and it's all about me, me, me. And it's all about my wealth and how much stuff I own. And I got bigger houses and more stuff, and more stuff. And I can buy, 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 buy. If we all go about that, our lives in that way, our world will not be able to look after us. So we need to realize that we share our world. And if nothing else in this tragedy that we're going through at the moment, we realize we all live on one little planet. Coronavirus does not know borders. It has not chosen one poor person versus a rich person or one country versus another. This, we, are we have to look after each other. And whatever we do in one side of the world affects us on the other. And we need to care and, uh, for the whole thing. And, the bicycle that we make, I've been in Brompton for 18 years. I joined when there were 25 of us. And I, you know, spent all my time with Andrew. And I took over the business um, now, gosh, 14 years ago. And, and I'm just making a little contribution. Um, and I don't, you know, I ride a bicycle. I don't need a big car i have a car it's very useful but i don't need a car to get from here to three miles away i can go on my bike for that if i'm visiting my um my parents who live 200 miles away it's a bit optimistic to take my children and my wife on a bicycle for 200 miles so the car is very useful but not for other journeys excellent excellent well i think uh, i also would like to share with you that uh, people are following from us uh, from Spain, uh, from Singapore, and from oh Hong God. Kong. This amazing. is our conversation. It's but amazing. See, but we have, we are a family. Indeed, indeed. Already here in this conversation, we're not, we're not Jakarta. We are not London. We are a family. And, and in, when I meet people who own a Brompton, and I've been so privileged that I pretend I'm working, but actually I'm visiting friends who own our product, and I met wonderful people who take me on amazing journeys and I've eaten wonderful local food. But there is this common understanding when one Brompton owner meets another, there's a sense of respect for what we are trying to achieve, which is much, much bigger than the bicycle. It is. Uh, someone was shouting, Italy is also here. Uh, <laughs> Argentina is also here. <laughs> Saudi is here. So I think I have to to list them. I think Germany just uh, appeared here. So I think it's a privilege uh, to listen uh, from you uh, directly, Will. Now, people sometimes when they are cycling forget about safety. And mm -hmm. the reason I'm wearing helmet just to remind, it is very important, Will. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you, you would agree with me, no question about that. And this, is, uh, this helmet is made in Indonesia. My name is here, red and white, uh, the flag. This is very smart. You go, yeah, you must and my go name is there. extremely fast with that helmet on. <laughs> and then like on, on the right here is uh, the uh, oh, bike nice. cycle, because yep. I'm a, a keen uh, cyclist. And on my left is a saxophone. Yeah, I know you're a I'm, I know. I'm also playing saxophone I to know. balance life. What is important, physical exercise, and mental exercise. Agreed. I think this is a very, very important. Yes. Safety. Will, now, you have been to Indonesia. Yes. And you told me also you were amazed and shocked by the enthusiasm in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the emergence of Brompton's popularity in Indonesia? So, I think, um, what, what, first of all, I'd say that I was very privileged to spend some time in Jakarta. Funnily enough, I, the previous time I'd been to Indonesia was for my honeymoon. So I have very, very fond memories of Indonesia. I went to Bali, 
wow. Lombok and Gili Tarawangan. Wow. So I was very lucky. Um, but when I went to Jakarta, we went on a bike ride. I went on two bike rides. In fact, three bike rides. But I went on one big bike ride with lots of customers. I think nearly 700 Brompton owners came for a, for a, a weekend ride. And the thing that made me most proud was the diversity of our customers. We have some groups that are wearing a helmet like you, and they are like, woo, they're so fast, their heads down, woo. And I rode with some of those guys, the Monas Club, around the Monas. I mean, literally, they were so fast, I could hardly keep up. But there was grandma, grandchildren, families, fast, slow. And this bike is not trying to target a particular person with a particular background, with a particular niche. What we're saying is we live in cities and we want to have a bit more freedom and we want to have a bit more fun. And we recognize that what we have at the moment isn't necessarily what we want. And what I sense in Indonesia, and, and it's not just Jakarta, because we have strong support in Bali, in, in um, Surabaya, there is really interesting support across Indonesia. But I think, I think there is an awareness that, and a, and a latent interest in rethinking how people want to live. And I think the Brompton symbolizes that um, opportunity to rethink how, how people live in their cities. And, and I think something that's quite exciting, particularly in Indonesia, is that the people who are riding our bike are influencers. They are people who can contribute to the journey that Indonesia takes itself on in the next 10, 20, 30 years. And we, we are talking about architects, planners, people involved in, in, in business. So... And, and we determine our own future. And, and you have an incredible country with so much opportunity and it's down to the people in the country to determine what you want, as we said, for our children and our grandchildren. And the simplicity of a bicycle makes us all feel young. And it reminds us of, in some respects, our own parents teaching us how to ride on a bicycle. Someone is shouting at me. Brampton Junction in Indonesia, please. So, I mean, yes, yes, and yes, but these things take time and we are learning. We're not some amazing, you know, enormous brand. Brompton is owned by me and my friends, Bro Andrew, the inventor and his friends and our staff now own 20% of the company and the staff ownership is growing, but we are private. And we are very traditional and long term. So we have to take our time with this business and learn. And we're learning about Indonesia. We're learning about how to do business. We have plans to, to, to engage more in the country, to set up an office, to support independent bike dealers, to become, to deliver a better service, better technical support, managing, helping them take some of the best practice that we have from we are working in 47 countries. We're dealing with, uh, with, with bicycle shops in Japan, in Europe, in America, and we can take some of that knowledge and we have our own shops, not just for our own store, but to teach some of the bike shops and to nurture this moment, movement sorry, in Indonesia. Because Brompton isn't the solution, it's part of the solution. And we want choice, and we want, we want cargo bikes, we want road bikes, we want mountain bikes, and we want to bring in the infrastructure. In, 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 to give you an example, in the UK, we sell through about 140 shops. Currently, in Indonesia, we are selling through 10 because the infrastructure isn't there. So we need to help develop that infrastructure. And then children's bikes, so children are growing. And, and so there's, it's a long-term plan. And yes, it will come, but it will come bit by bit. Of course, it never comes fast enough, but we have to be patient. And then when you look back in 10 years, you think we've made a lot of progress. Thank you very much, Will. Uh, that's very encouraging. And certainly we look forward 
uh, Brompton opening office in Indonesia. I think mm. people are looking forward to it. I and need to someone, come back and eat some more food and go on more bike rides. Um, someone is also shouting, how about Macau? See, Macau is also uh, joining us here. My sister also working in the Ministry of Tourism and she said that she is more than happy to host you to have another second honeymoon with your wife, definitely. Oh. So I think let's arrange it. Uh, let's arrange it. Yeah. Well, uh, one before last the question. There is a perception yeah. uh, in so many in Indonesia, especially Brompton is posh, yes. too expensive, yes. high class, yes. status symbol. How do you mis demystify that perception? So there is no doubt that the Brompton is expensive. No doubt about it at all. Um, and funnily enough, I just showed you the factory at the beginning of this uh, conversation. But most of our cost in the, in the Brompton is in the materials. It is in the steel, it's in the white heart malleable, it's in the 7075 aluminium, it is in the brake levers, brake calipers, it's in the material. The, the, the labour cost as a percentage is less than 20%. And so there is a misconception by our customers that because we make it in London, the labour cost must be very, very high, which it isn't actually. It's around about 20%. And the material cost is the same whether you're in the UK or anywhere else in the world, because the shipping of materials is quite cheap when you're shipping by container. So most of what you are buying is the product itself and the time and the material that goes into it. And unfortunately, if you want something delightful, it is expensive. And we know that the average earnings in Indonesia are less than other countries. But I think we can't suddenly make a cheap bike because then we won't be proud of it. And it's not what our business is about. But I do... See, even Marquette Simba is also interested in... Uh, uh, There's in a nice front pannier for your bike, for your, for your <laughs> cat. The cat can sit in the nice front pannier. <laughs> but I think, for me, um, we need to realise that we can't suddenly make the bike cheaper. We, I, have, I have one of the frames here. So this is, this is sitting on my desk because one of my staff has, has, has given it to me. Mm -hmm. But he's learning and I asked him to get, send me one, but it's got his name on it and you can see the brazing and it has, um, you can't really see it there, but it's got the initials of the brazer just there, hard yeah. to see. Yeah. And um, we're producing something that is beautiful and very high quality. And I think what, what in, in Indonesia, what we need to realize is that the people that are buying the Brompton are the pioneers. They are the opinion formers. And if cycling becomes cool, because of Brompton and Brompton becomes the spearhead of a movement across Indonesia which affects everybody in their different ways and some people might be buying a second-hand Brompton somebody might not be buying a Brompton but they want to get on a bicycle because they can see the fun other people might be buying their bike over 12 months or 24 months what we this isn't about just Brompton it's about being part of a movement yeah. of urban living and how can it be right that most of the city is designed around a car it's not designed around the human beings that live in the city it's designed around the car that in many respects pollutes the city we all have that in every city around the world but we have a responsibility to work to change that and we can contribute in a little way and if we can do that with fun and this bicycle will be there for 20 years the, the, the phone i'm talking to you on is very expensive but it's very useful and i use it a lot but it won't be there in 20 years in three or four years i have to buy another one my brompton is not cheap but it's very useful i use it all the time and i've got one downstairs that's 16 years old so we are not at all cheap but i hope for those customers that own the brompton they love it because it's value and useful yeah, I think Kamala uh, 
commented by saying that not cheap but worth it is worth it so i think yes. i think this is the point uh well you know we are now still in the uh, pandemic uh, situation mm -hmm. and hopefully when the situation uh, somewhat under control do you have any plan for the brompton race competition in indonesia or jakarta or <laughs> in any other cities please so um well the answer is we can't wait to do more racing um not least we, we were due to be racing last year that was cancelled i fear um at the moment it looks like our plans even for this summer are looking increasingly dodgy um so i think realistically for the next probably for this year i really hope i'm going to be able to get out to asia um later this year i mean i really it's, it's been too long so we may not be able to organize um formal races but we can definitely do riding together and i think you know i had such a fun time when i was last in indonesia riding with our customers and learning about the people of indonesia and there were people from all over indonesia and and so i think unfortunately the big events we will have to be a bit more patient but we can you know cycling is a bit like it, it's a wonderful way of transporting yourself because it it's like social distancing on a bike because you can't get too close to somebody on a bike because you'll hit them so and you're naturally the air's rushing past so you know as we unlock and as we regain our freedoms i think a lot of people will be catching up with friends they'll be desperate to get out from their flats and to get on their bikes and see their friends again yeah, it did i think the the positive side of uh, pandemic i think now people are more uh, realizing that health is very important and cycling yeah. is very one of them is by uh, continuously uh, doing the, the the cycling well um certainly uh, we are very much looking forward for the opening of the representative office brompton in jakarta yeah. and certainly uh, more than that if indonesia could be also part of the Uh, global supply chains in terms of uh, mm. materials. I think we do have a number of uh, quality that could also support uh, Brompton's uh, uh, product. Well, my last question in the form of uh, anything that you would like to convey to the uh, number of uh, groups. Some people, they call it Brompids, uh, Brompton's group, and so many groups all <laughs> over the world, including Indonesia. Any message that you would like to convey to them? Yes, I think my message is, I'm repeating myself, so apologies, but my message is that um, ultimately we are building a product that we hope brings freedom and fun into people's lives. And, um, but, but above that, I, we believe strongly that all of us have a responsibility in how we go about our lives to contribute a little bit to the society that we work in and live in and to the planet that we all share. And I think there is increasingly a responsibility on businesses, not just to think about shareholders, but to think about the society and the planet in which they operate. And, and I think we are all, all of the Brompton customers, they all work in businesses. We all work. So we all can contribute in a little way and we don't have to be extreme, but if we do a little something, we have 850,000 customers. We do a little something, bit by bit, we, we, we will begin to see a movement which is very powerful and, and good for society as a whole. Well, it has been a, a pleasure and an honor uh, to learn from you yourself directly the best person uh, to convince uh, the importance of healthier, happier lifestyle, uh, cycling, less uh, carbon. Uh, I think you have said a lot of good things, very appealing. And I am not convinced yet uh, to get my Brompton until I visit your office. I know, we've got to get I that organized. But my I'm, own I'm eyes, the manufacturer in London, then I will make a judgment when I'm visiting you, seeing you, and also seeing the manufacturer. I'm hoping that when you come to visit, you'll come on the tube and you'll pedal home on the Brompton.
Definitely, I will. I will. <laughs> Bill, again, thank you very much. Uh, have a good day. Stay safe and stay healthy. Ezra, thank you so much for inviting me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. Bye.